In previous years I've always gone fishing on my birthday, catching some truly memorable carp along the way and often being the highlight of my year. But 2020 was supposed to be different with it being my 40th. We were going to have a gathering with all my angling friends from across Europe, but like so many plans people have made throughout the year, sadly this one wasn't going to happen. Choosing to return to default for my celebrations, embarking on a multi-venue road trip, we would catch some ridiculous carp and spend some great time with friends. Welcome to the Carp Life for Birthday Bash. You are for the freedom, so take your chance. <laughs> so here we are once more bombing down the motorway for another birthday session now this year it's my 40th and originally we'd planned to have a big beach party in the south of france near lorient Taurus's house where we'd have all our friends from Europe and the UK coming out to join us for a big celebration. But unfortunately, two weeks ago, the UK government imposed a two week quarantine period for anyone traveling outside of the UK, which isn't really gonna work for all our friends coming out to celebrate with us. So we've decided to can that off in favor of going fishing. Now that's no big downer for me because there'll be plenty of time for parties later on in the year, I'm sure. And with all the things that are going on in the world, it's no, no real big deal, to be honest. And I really love carp fishing. First up, we're gonna be heading down to our local gravel pit, which has been really, really kind to us this year. We've caught a number of big carp on every single session, with Claire catching a new PB of 57 pounds. So we're hoping to arrive there approximately 30 minutes to an hour before dark, and where we'll be able to observe the fish showing and hopefully be able to get on them tonight. If not, we'd be up early in the morning as they do have a habit of throwing themselves out the water just before first light. After that, we're going to be heading on up to the Alps. We'll be hooking up with some of our friends who are fishing some of the lakes up there. We'll hopefully also be able to catch some big carp and have some lovely times before we have to head home. We arrived at the lake an hour before sunset, so we could get around and have a good look about and hopefully see some showing fish. Now we spent a lot of time looking through the binoculars and as of yet, we've seen nothing, have we Claire? Except from a lot of anglers. Yeah. But we're still gonna give it a bash, give it our best shot and uh, hope for the best. That's all we can do. But yeah, with so many anglers on the lake, it does give us a limited amount of options to move. Now this lake is days only, but you are allowed to camp beside the water. So we've got to get ourselves in a central spot so we have a good view of the lake and get up early and then try to move on to show and fish and uh, yeah. So we best get moving as time's ticking away. Lots of work to do, let's go baby. And hopefully see you guys soon. Thank you, Claire. That's all right, babe. We was up early this morning, about an hour before sunrise, and we've only had a couple of fish show, to be honest, and they was quite close in. But um, as the sun gets a bit higher in the sky, it's normally that hour after sunrise we're gonna see the most of them show. So um, we haven't unpacked the boat yet. We've left all the kit in there, except for the bed chairs and the tea making kit. And uh, yeah, we're just ready to move. Rigs are tied. Tied them up last night. So we're just gonna wait and see what happens. Whether we stay here or we move. Right, let's get outside and uh, keep the observations going. Even though now we could legally put our rods out, we were in no rush. Choosing instead to wait for signs of fish activity before deciding where we'd deploy our rods. That's a lovely coffee, thank you. One just jumped there. Cool, right, they're jumping everywhere. So let's get this show on the road. Seems like one at that distance, one at that distance, like.
scattering a little bit of uh, scope it squid. Not going to put a lot out. I know some of the other guys fishing at the moment have been piling the bait in and it hasn't really worked out for them. So I'm just going for a real thin scattering. We're going to bait wide as well, wide and thin. And I hope the fish come across the bait. Start searching around for a bit more. We're using a cultured 24mm bottom bait with a red scopic squid pop up. And uh, yeah, I'm hoping the cultured hook bait is going to be super attractive and they're just going to hone in on that. Right, this area isn't actually a hard spot. There's lots of little muscle beds. I don't know if you can see. See here. I'm going to drop the camera down to have a look. These are little clusters of mussels here. So I'm sure this is going to be an area that fish are going to want to feed in. So again, as always, I'm just going to feather my line down as this as a wood. Yeah, that was actually all right. That went down pretty tough. Just as I would as I was casting. Just make sure that, um, that rig's laid out nice on the bottom. Big old boat just sitting on the bottom. Lots of fish around it. That's the boat, it's very, very hard. Just on my right, so I think I just want to come round, bounce this lead to feel it drop off the side. There it is. I might have to pop the camera down and have a look. On these little 80 pound eBay cameras, it comes well in handy for stuff like this. Oh my lord. See all those muscles on the bottom there? It's absolutely littered with muscles. That's pretty insane. That to me looks like a fantastic spot. So I'm just going to bounce that marker back until it hits the boat and we're going to fish here. So literally we're right off the tip of that boat there, right off the tip of the bow. Just going to get our rod in, straight down to that muscle bed. We've got more bait just on top of that rod. Oh good. Where? Circle, see it? Well, did you see the fish come out? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, and no, I can't put one there, so I've got one here, just short where they kept jumping. So, but yeah, I've got one right over there now, Claire. There's another big boat over there. With only half our rods out, the fish were showing in our area. Choosing not to deploy any more lines, so to keep the disturbance to the minimum, we were sure it wouldn't be long before our first rod was away. Oh yeah, it's a unit, man. Oh yeah, f Yes. Oh. Yeah. Shit. Oh, that's a pucker one. 
<sighs> no sooner than I'd secured my fish in the retainer, my other rod was away. Come on, dog. Jump out of the way. When you've got the boat balanced and you're heading straight, you can often steer while right the pressure of the rod, which makes things a little bit easier for you. It's all right, doggy. Do you like that? Come fishing in with me, that. I've got snags over here, so I need to be really careful. I let these fish get too close into that margin. Oh, yeah, he's heading right into those snags. Try and head him off a bit. It's a small one, real jagged, sharp fight, rather than that slow plodding. Yeah. Well, it might be a bit bigger than a foot, actually. Oh. Yeah. It's a pizza. Little chunky fat one. Please be sharp. Oh yes, it's sharp as a razor. <laughs> Cut you, make you bleed. Doesn't matter. You wouldn't believe how much time this saves. How many times I've had a little extra bite after just instantly dropping my line and returning with the fish. Right, here we go, let's get some bait in first. <clears throat> Faithful squid, spreading it thin. Oh, oh, oh. Remember you got to press that button. Okay, the clutch is as tight as it needs to be. Just jump in the boat, yeah? yeah. Come on. Come on. I love you so much. How do you mean? I am. Oh, it's a big one. Thanks. Yeah. It's going out. Oh, that is a big car. Yeah, I know, I know it is. Oh, it's one of the big ones. <laughs> oh, it's a big one. He's in. Yeah. Yeah, baby. <laughs> oh, yeah, mate. Fucking monster, man. Yeah, baby. The fucking monster. Oh, yeah. Woo! Let's have it. I love this place, but I love you even more. Big hat. I have to thank the man with the big hat. The man with the big hat. <laughs> and we got the dog in the boat as well. We love. Oh Lord, Claire. <laughs> that thing is absolutely dense. Oh. It's ridiculous. That's a proper big one, that Claire. That's a proper big one. And it's definitely not a tench. Yeah. I reckon it's about 55 pounds. Mm, I reckon 52. No, 55. And I'll tell you what, if I'm right, you're cooking dinner tonight. <laughs> He's coming in, babe. He's going to up high now, first. It's a little one, sweet. Small and cool. Boom. Well done, babe. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> oh, I'm stuck in the mud. <laughs> so, I was just about to do... Uh, she's on my... My first one today, and this little monster went screaming off. This little warrior beat me up, but it was all fun. Slipping back and get back to the other one. Good times. Love you, baby. Love you too. <laughs> Come on, let's get the rod back out and get your big one photoed. Let's do this, baby. This is the smallest one of today's captures, caught from a sunken barge out to my right. When I come across this feature with my uh, side imaging on my echo sounder, I couldn't actually believe how, uh, how big this barge was. So I dropped down a camera to make sure I wasn't fishing too close or uh, near any sharp metal objects. And yeah, the whole bottom was literally littered with mussels. 
while I'm holding this fish in my hands now, I can feel the muscles coming out of his ass. So clearly it's a food source these fish are absolutely keen on. But yeah, she's a proper cracker. Let's go show you some of the bigger ones. <laughs> what a lovely little character. Go say hello, Mina. See you later. <laughs> but check that old gnarly beast out. A proper old pucker one. It's the second bite this morning. The first one fell off unfortunately, but I put my line straight back out and five minutes later, this old warrior went rattling off. Scopic squid cultured hook bait doing the job again. These fish just can't get enough of it, I tell ya. What a pucker old carp. Thanks for coming, buddy. Thank you so much. So fishies near that. Come in. Little fish. That's a mega one, Claire. Yeah. Absolute Megatron. Look at him. Wow. So early this morning, I popped to the patisserie to grab me and Samir some breakfast, and on my return. Samir is in the boat with an absolute banger. Mega fish. Helped him out with the fish. My rod went screaming off. To my surprise, this monster. I can't tell you how happy I am. This lake has been so kind to us. It's magical, in fact. And I tell you what, every time we stick our rods in it, it's just magical. Carnage! Absolutely. <laughs> it's the best. And it's a stone throw away from our house. So, how lucky are we? Good times, baby. Yeah, mega times. Best That's a times. mega carp as well, babe. Well yeah. done. Thanks for coming, you beautiful monster. Beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. The rods fell silent for the last few hours of daylight but that didn't matter as we'd had a mega productive day. We just hoped tomorrow would bring more of the same results. Last night I had a visit from Guard to Pesh. Now this shouldn't have been a problem as I reeled in all my rods at 8.15. Yeah, okay, it might have been 15 minutes late, but they were all in by 10.30 when they come round. Now, he come and checked all our licenses, and then suddenly started paying an interest into my boilies on my, on my rod. Um, he then proceeded to claim that my boilies were wet and uh, I've been night fishing, which is absolute bull <laughs> Like, I'll try to explain to him that my rods have been in the lake all day and then boilies have been in the lake all day and that's why they're wet. But he was absolutely having none of it. So he actually gave me my first verbalization on this venue, which is really me off. So now if I don't reel in exactly on minute perfect time, I can have my rods confiscated. And um, yeah, I just feel there's some sort of ulterior motive here. I'm not too sure. He asked me if I was angling for a brand, if I was filming. I said no. So this morning I've got my, I've actually gone past the time I can put my rods out. So you can put your rods out a half hour before sunrise. I've actually waited all the way to sunrise. And I just don't want to get caught out and have my gear taken for no reason at all. But yeah, it's looking pucker out here. I did bait all the spots last night after I pulled my rods in. So um, just to begin with, I'm just putting the rods out that worked yesterday. And then we're sort of going to play it by ear by then. If I've got to move a few around or, um, or if the ones I put that we caught on yesterday aren't working and we might move them. But yeah, I'm just going to put a few rods out for the minute to see how it goes. And then sort of, if I see a few fish show in the same spot, then I'll put some other rods out in them spots. Right, Claire's made me a lovely coffee now. So I've got to neck that, get out in the boat, and get the rest of the rods out. You can do one, Bush. I don't know what your beef is. What, you think I'm shook? i oh, clear off. Look at you. Yeah, you done know, bruv. I'm 
rock solid. Let's get out of it. Look at him thinking he's chasing me off. Just gonna give you a little insight into my approach when tackling a venue like this. Now this lake isn't particularly difficult, although it can be at times. It's a pressured water, a big gravel pit, and has crystal clear water. So the carp you would think would be easy to spot, but I tell you what, in all the times that we've actually angled here, we've never seen one in the edge. But one thing they do is show a lot, and that is really, really helpful when it comes to catching fish from a venue like this. For us, we're not actually that keen on getting out and finding our spots and putting loads of bait out and waiting for them to arrive. We actually prefer sight fishing. Generally, we arrive at the early hours of the morning when fishing this venue. And the reason for that being is so we can see the fish show. Once we've located the fish and seen a few show, then we get ourselves into the nearest swim that's available to where the showing fish are. We don't always put all our rods out. So I'll give you an example, yesterday we actually only ended up fishing two rods each. And the reason for that was we didn't see enough fish activity, but the four rods we did put out all produced carp. Now you may think, oh, you're allowed to use four rods. Why wouldn't you just put four rods out? And for me, I think when you've got lots of lines in the water, you're cutting each other off, and you're probably better off just putting the rods out exactly where the fish are showing, and you know where the fish are feeding, so you can get them bites without cutting yourself off with another extra line here or there. Now, if we have a few captures off the same spot, then we start to introduce bait, and we might start stepping it up to a kilo each time we drop. Just initially, it's a couple of handfuls, and that's why it's no problem for me to move spot it's sometimes two or three times in a day because I don't feel like I'm littering my swim with bait by having lots of bait invested into one single spot. It sort of stops people from moving sometimes. Oh, I've just put a kilo of bait out. Oh, you know, they're showing 50 yards away. Maybe they're going to turn up. Maybe they won't. But I'm pretty sure if I see a fish jump and I go and put a rod on that fish, then it's on the money. So, the tip of the day from Smear is don't pile it in, fish for a bite, fish on fish, and I'm sure it'll catch more fish. The morning had been very quiet, with no action at all. But as the wind speed began to pick up, blowing into our margin, Claire spotted a fish show, twice. Choosing to deploy one of the spare rods, she would adopt a slightly different approach to me, baiting tight over the rig in the hope of stealing a quick bite. Despite our best efforts and the optimum conditions, the rod remained silent for the entirety of the afternoon. We were supposed to be off first thing the following day, but we couldn't help feel like we wanted to give it a few extra hours in the morning before we left. Well, we stuck the rods in for a couple of hours this morning, like we said yesterday, but to be honest, the gamble hasn't really paid off. Now the conditions look really perfect. All night we had big wind smashing into our bank, plus the rain, and it's been no different this morning. But the fish just haven't turned up on it. We can't really spare any more time here. We've got more places to go now, haven't we, Claire? Yeah, I think we'd have a better chance if we go somewhere where it's already been a bit colder. In the Alps. One of my favorite places, so we just need to get packed up and go. Yep. Yeah, so I think you should get your skates on, Smith. Go on, yeah. go and get their markers in, I'll get the rods in, and let's get the boat rammed, jammed, and let's go, baby. I'm gonna walk away from you, away from you, away from you. Same old story every day. Bada bang bang bang, the rich are getting rich in every way. Well, well, the same old story every day. It's the poor man not suffering every way. Well, well, too much inequity, I say. Hell, I'm too much inequity, I say. Y'all hear? Too much of wickedness, I pray. Well, well, you read it on your nose every day. Well, we've just walked up in the Alps, and this is another days only venue. But unfortunately, this venue we're not allowed to sleep beside the water or even in the country park that it's in. So we decided to pull up about a kilometre away at a recreation ground and we're just going to throw the bed chairs out for the night and keep in a car park and uh, get packed up about 6am in the morning and head down to the lake. 
It's getting late now, so we best get a move on, eh, sweetheart? Let's get this done, baby. So excited, I can't wait. Yeah. Let's go. Hopefully there's a big one or two for us waiting here in the morning. You join us on a very frosty morning in the Alps. We got here about six o'clock and it's absolutely pissing it down. So we just threw the bivvy up quick and uh, had a coffee and sat out until first light where we are now. So we're just getting the rods ready to deploy to the lake and it's looking pucker, isn't it, Claire? Absolutely sick. <laughs> better place I would want to be right now. Just want to get the rods out though. Yeah, it's proper fresh morning, but we are joined by a local legend, man like Noor. How you doing buddy? You alright? It's good? Yeah, it's okay. Look. Yeah, it's okay. I have a snow. <laughs> it's okay. It's good. <laughs> it's a little cold, but it's good. Ready for some fishing today then, pal? Yeah, inshallah. Right, I'll just get all my kit sorted now and uh, get my rods out because uh, even though I got here first, Noor has managed to beat me to getting the rods out, as you can see down there. Man's on it. <laughs> so I'll just get my together, get cracking now. It's lovely. Spot number one, we're fishing. Let's go, baby. Well, I was just uh, just looking for a spot. And this one's just boshed out right next to me, so yeah, sort of giving the game away a bit. Just gonna drop my line here and uh, hopefully um hopefully we can pick up a carp or two. Just sat that down nicely on a nice little hard patch. Literally inside the rings. As soon as we got over the top, I see that the bottom was hard on the echo. So I had a quick donk around, drop my lead. Do no more. I reckon that one will be away in a couple of hours. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. With all the rods out on the spots, it was time for one of Claire's cooked breakfasts and much needed energy for the fresh autonomous conditions. For us, the Alps are a very special place with incredible panoramic views that are a delight to the eye and a true wonderland for carp fishing. What more could an angler want? Slow run. The one I just put, bro. Is here? No. Yeah, yeah, the line is here. I can feel it touching. No, it's come off now. No. I feel, yeah, yeah, the fish was here, bro. Well, that didn't end too well, did it? Unfortunately, that take I just had fell off. Um, absolutely wounded, to be honest. It's been really quiet all day. We see a few show in the area where we got our lines this morning. So we put them there and uh, yeah, the day was just pretty dead. Just the odd show uh, in the reserve, like near where we're fishing. But the rest of the lake was absolutely dead. Um, I just felt like I could probably tempt to buy it. So I re, uh, re dropped my lines about 30 minutes ago and just baited really, really tight on top of the lead instead of spreading it out wide and thin like I normally do. And yeah, 30 minutes later, real slow take. Picked the rod up, felt real heavy, you know, and um, yeah, the fish has actually swum around one of the marker buoys like a couple of times. Ended up getting itself off. Um, absolutely wounded, to be honest, but um, that's carp fishing hay. So I've just re-dropped that one. I've also wound in the rod that's on the right of it as well and done the same, just dropped it with a real tight bait and um, I'm hoping I can try and sneak another bite out in the last 45 minutes of light before we got to reel in. 
Wish us luck. Unfortunately, the one bike would be our first and only encounter for the day. With the daylight and our hopes fading, it was time to reel in for the night. We was up and got our rods out early the following morning. Seeing several fish show in the same area as the day before, we decided to stay put in the hope we could get a quick bite. Fresh morning this morning, isn't it, Claire? It's beautiful. I don't know about beautiful. It's proper freezing mist, this. When have you seen this this year? It's amazing, it's lovely. True. I don't even got a jacket on. I'm cold. Hot coffee, beautiful croissant from North. Happy That's days. That's the start of the day. Now all we need is a cup. Or two, or three. Get on. I don't think it's very big, but... It's a bite. <sighs> Finally, the blank is over. <sighs> Small coming, but happy all the same. She's just happy to break the duck here. Some incredible surroundings and a real beautiful place but I'm not going to lie, the fishing has been difficult compared to previous sessions and I'm putting most of that down to the temperature you know it was uh, minus two last night and um, this morning hasn't got above five degrees so yeah it's a stark contrast to uh, 35 degrees last week and uh, yeah I just think it's had a major impact on the angling but yep we're off the mark so I'm probably buzzing, lovely Boom. With two fish landed in rapid succession, our gamble to stay put had paid off. <laughs> well, here's a small comment from this morning. Unfortunately, Claire's one just escaped and was just about to hold off for pictures. But yeah, the action started now. Hopefully we can catch a couple more throughout the day before we head on off to the next venue. See you later, buddy. Good times. But suddenly from nowhere, eh? From quiet to fish, fish, fish. It's good. Yeah. Too much cold, fish. It's all good, mate. It's all good. That's a cheese, bro. Oh, that's a big one, mate. It's 20, yeah? Uh, maybe 22. Oh, wow. Yeah, check out that. Look at the back. Look how wide he is. <laughs> yes, no. Yes, no. Nor had managed to land himself an epic carp of 25 kilos. That's a whopping 55 pounds in old money. Yeah, mega one, Nor, mate. Well done, buddy. <laughs> Finn, bro, look at this fish. Mega one. Early start this morning, eh? Temperatures are cold. Very cold. Yes, mate, well done. After the return of Norse Big Carp, there was to be no further action. Choosing to stick it out until dusk before packing up and heading off to the third and final venue. Well, that's us all packed up and ready to head off. We've just said goodbye to Nor as he's working night, so he's had to dash off. But yeah, we're heading to the third and final venue of our trip for the next three to four nights. 
This particular venue is extremely beautiful and contains some very unique and special fish. One in particular is the dinosaur carp, which I had the pleasure of photographing and weighing for one of my clients back in the spring, which was pretty amazing. And yeah, I'd absolutely love to catch that fish, but there's plenty of big ones to go at. So we're hoping we can finish our trip on an absolute high. Wow, I was not expecting to wake up and be surrounded by this much beauty. So many mountains, snow's over there. I reckon in a couple of weeks it'll be full. It's just awesome, what a beautiful place to be. Let's catch some fish, shall we? Let's do this. Here we are on the final venue of my birthday trip and undoubtedly we've saved the best till last. This lake has everything. Crystal clear turquoise water, snow capped mountains in the middle of an alpine forest and contains a huge livestock with some really, really big carp. We arrived here yesterday evening and we decided just to stick two rods out each after setting up camp as it was getting pretty late. So I just towed the rods out to spots I already knew. At five o'clock this morning I had a run where the fish unfortunately got snagged up in the trees and the snags on the other side we was fishing and yeah I lost it but um, to be honest I did drop the rig in the middle of the baited spot which absolutely isn't the one here for a big one. The big ones tend to feed just off the main body of bait and yeah that's given us the much success this year when I've angled this lake. As for approach, it's pretty similar to the previous Alpine Lake, as there's lots of crayfish and nuisance species that gnaw away at our boilies, so we fish a single tiger nut on our hook, accompanied by a yellow scopic squid pop-up. I do actually bait a lot of boilie here, as the fish do love a lot of bait, but I mix it in with the tiger nuts, and instead of spreading it out wide and thin like I had to in the first venue, I actually concentrate all the bait in a, in a single patch, as this seems to provide the best results here. Generally, the lake does mostly day bites here, so I'm hoping at some point we're gonna get into some action today. Just moments after recording my piece to camera, the snaggy tree rod was away once more. Okay, it's just woken up. Oh. Follow it because I don't want to get back off the leader. I want to stay on the leader. Less knots to go wrong. Staying quite tight to the bottom, so normally a better sign. Suddenly feels like a really good fish. Open the bail arm. Open it so I can take the line off. Thank you. Fortunately, it's picked up me other line. Claire's opened the bail arm. I just hope that line doesn't slide down into the shank of the hook. Pull the, pull the hook out of the fish, man. That would be the worst, worst case scenario here. Feel the other line on my line. It's horrible. Absolutely horrible. It's a decent carp. Oh, yeah, it's a massive one. It's a big one. Oh yeah, that's an absolute tank. Oh, oh wow, wow. Oh, Parker, that's not one I've had before either. Oh, lovely. Oh, yes, mate. Oh, Lord, that's a big one. Jeez. Jeez. That is a unit. Absolute unit. And he's got the whip. Oh my god, what a carp. Whoa, he's never coming off. He's nailed to absolute death. Oh lord, absolutely wow. What a fish, yes! Absolutely mega, is that sharp enough to go back out? Oh, yes it is as well. Let's we'll creep over there while we're here. Just drop it in. Caught ourselves so many fish in the past. Just literally, instead of... Um, 
Just getting all excited with your big capture and heading back to the bank. If you've got spare rigs in the boat or leads, or if um, you look still sharp, then yeah, get that rod back in the water ASAP. Because you never know what's around the corner, and often you find these big carp swim around with other big carp. So, to be honest, I don't know what I was thinking last night. I was a bit tired. I dropped my rig in the middle of the baited spot, and that's never normally the one for big fish. So, yeah, when I uh, re dropped it this morning, I made sure it was off center. So, the main spot was there. So, I'm going to drop this one here. Cool. Right, let's back out. Let's get back to the bank with this baby. Yeah, it's a nice old one, man. Look. Oh, wow. Yeah, big head, big shoulders. Oh, look at that. Sick. <laughs> That's a mega one. Oh. Oh. Look at that belly. It's a proper big fat belly. And in here. What clues as to what he's been eating. That's the old crayfish. That's why he's such a fatty. We'll check that out for a first fish from the new venue. We ended up getting all our rods out here about one o'clock in the morning. The first run rattled off at about 5 a.m. and uh, yeah, it got snagged up. So I moved the uh, rod slightly out from the uh, from the spot. It was about an hour afterwards. This one went rattling off. 59 and a bit pounds. An absolute beast. 27 kilos uh, for our European friends. It's one of the old ones and uh, I've got to say, I'm really absolutely buzzing to catch one of these old stock. <sighs> what a lovely car. Best times, baby. Oh. Always. Proper old warrior, one of the classics from the lake. And I feel so privileged to have caught her. Thank you so much for coming. Truly privileged. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. Small but cool. This one's for you, Alan. All our rods were positioned perfectly, but surprisingly there was no further action that day. We were still confident that the night might bring us one of the lake's jewels, or at least we hoped. I don't believe it. This is the actual carp I came here for. Words can't express how I'm feeling right now. This thing is an absolute tank. One they call a dinosaur. It's a big one. Absolute brute of a carp. Incredible fish. Man, I can't believe I've actually done it. Let's get him on the scales and see what he goes. It's 57 pound last time my pal caught him. So I'm hoping 
hoping he's going to be a bit more as he was spawned out last time but yeah what an incredible old carp loveliest of times I can't believe it actually caught him, Claire. Buzzing. I said you would. Mate, the dinosaur fish. Well, do you know what, babe? Well deserved. It's your birthday! It is indeed. Birthday Dinosaurus Rex. Let's have it. I never actually imagined I'd actually catch him, you know. I looked at his pictures so much. I just didn't actually think I'd catch him. I got him. And here he is. Oh, wow. Look at that, as old as the hills. Dinosaur, the oldest carp in the lake, and the one I actually really wanted from here. A very seldom target fish, but when I see pictures of this one, I just knew I had to catch it. After having an early encounter, uh, way back in July, when my client actually caught this on a guiding trip, I was even more obsessed with catching this carp. Oh, what an incredible creature. Oh. Oh. Turn up. I can't. <laughs> 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 well, there he is, my birthday carp. Couldn't wish for anything better. Mega, mega, mega carp. Yeah! Yay! The Happy dinosaur! Birthday! Woo! The capture of the dinosaur at over 60 pounds was possibly the best birthday present I could have wished for, but the action was far from over. So this is one of the three small carps I caught last night. Not been lucky enough to catch a big one yet. Big or small, all very cool. <laughs> yeah, man. Well done, darling. Good times. <laughs> yes, Claire. And we're off again. Yeah? Turn yeah. off you go. I'll be your pilot, sweetheart. Need to get him out of the snag a bit first. Look at you, proper marlin wrenching. You sound so quick. Go on, Marlene Claire. Did you Marlene strike it? <laughs> no, you didn't Marlene oh, strike it, was. thank <laughs> God. <laughs> Not on the lead yet. There's the lead up. Bum! Did you get him? Yay! <laughs> yes, Claire. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> I've had a few escape from me this session, haven't I? Yeah. But that was another little uh, medium pasty. That's one for you again, Al. <laughs> Beautiful, all the same. <laughs> it had been a productive morning, and one that had seen one of my dreams come true. But as we headed towards the afternoon, unexpectedly the temperatures soared to over 30 degrees. But that didn't matter on this venue, as it fished its best in hot weather. Wow. <coughs> it's not frosty in the Alpine lakes then, Claire. You 
me. Uh, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Boom. There you go. Got to get him clear of that obstacle first, away from the snags, darling. Yes. We jump in the boat. She's doing dog wing with us. Yeah. Lala. Yep. Beautiful. Let him go and get bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Kiss. The dog thing. Yeah. <laughs> As the day drew to a close, I considered this might actually be the best birthday a carp angler could hope for. Spending my 40th in such captivating surroundings, blessed with giant carp. With my wife and soulmate, I couldn't have wished for anything more. Having caught the lake's two largest residents, I felt it was only fair that Claire fished all six rods until she caught a big one. Subsequently, she was up all night hauling carp from the right-hand side of the swim. I've been up all night, catching fish roughly around the side of this little butte. From 12 till 5, it has been fun, but I'm wondering when the big ones are going to turn up. Beautiful all the same. It's been awesome. Thanks for coming to see me. Beautiful little common. Become a bigger monster. See you again another day. With all the bites coming from the right hand side of the swim, Claire decided to move two rods next to the snaggy tree after seeing showing fish that morning. The snaggy tree had also been the spot where I caught the two big carp from, so she hoped this spot would produce more of the same for her. Well, look at all them divots and holes. I definitely think that that is going to be Carp no, feeding it there. Completely. Let's, let's, let's get that bait in, baby, and drop that line. So far, this birthday session is going really, really well. I've had a couple of big uns, and to be honest, the fishing's been absolutely carnage. I'm just hoping that Claire can catch a big un for our last night. But we've got our good friends Michael Pilar and uh, Ozzy Remy coming down to see us today. So they're going to fish our last night with us uh, before we have to go home tomorrow. So hopefully, between us all, one of us is going to catch a big un. This is the Dutch animation show <laughs> that's entering your screen. <laughs> All right, guys, I have good news. I come here together with my friend Ossie. He's still putting away the car. We come here to show Claire and Sami some real love and some fishing. <laughs> because sometimes the legend from Holland needs to yeah, say it. Come do it yourself. Coming from Switzerland, we fished one night here in the Alps. Yeah. And uh, Swiss was also amazing. Great, great scenery. And a few small fish and one big one. So, uh, session till now is okay. And yeah. these are our final two nights, so uh, let's see what happens. Yeah. You guys uh, leave tomorrow? Yeah, yeah we okay. leave tomorrow. You have to stay <laughs> in the screen. Okay, <laughs> we go now. Sammy, goodbye. Right, let me put this camera down. I'm going to come <laughs> kick your ass. So, this is the better half of the tool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Claire, what's Hi. happening over here? So, we, was just, we just hooked up with you over there and this right-hand rod went screaming off. And funnily enough, we moved both my left-hand rods to the yeah. right and it sort of paid off. Quite a few small fish, but okay, okay. I think... This could be the banger. This could be the banger. Yeah. 
Yes, well done, darling. Buzzing, buzzing. We did say it goes screaming off, and they are getting bigger. So the carnage continues. Our good friends Pilar and Ozzy just turned up, and my left hand rod went screaming off. To my surprise, this beautiful little mirror, not the biggest, but beautiful all the same, and I'm still waiting for that big one to turn up. Best times. Right down the road. Well done, darling. Well done, darling. Well, that was a big one, wasn't it, Claire? <laughs> More action on the right, hey? It was worth moving your rod over, wasn't it, darling? Right move. <laughs> <laughs> From 10 metres to 6 metres, it paid off. Yeah, that's it. Found that rock spot. Let's do it. Let's get this, let's get this baby in. Let's just hope for a bigger next. So, yeah. this is common corner, this one, isn't it? Yeah. Common carnage corner. <laughs> Right moves to change my uh, rods from the left to the right, but it appears I found common corner, <laughs> and they're all quite small, <laughs> but they're all very cool. Well, I was just about to have my cup of tea, and my right hand rod went screaming off. It's quite far out. I've got it out of the snag, sort of, but now. Let's go in the boat. About the same as the other one, just a bit far. Yeah. Oh. Yes, Claire. <laughs> Did you see where that just went? <laughs> Good to get in. Well done. Bang. They keep coming and they're getting slightly bigger and this one for me is far the most beautiful. The scales are absolutely stunning and tonight I'm hoping to bag myself a monster. Thanks for coming you little beauty. With another productive day coming to a close, it was time to make our preparations for the night, tying fresh rigs for all the rods, rebaiting, redropping all our lines with the utmost accuracy for one last time. It's been a pretty uneventful night, hasn't it, sweetheart? Well, I woke up feeling rosy. So, yeah, we had lots of sleep. No fish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the first time we've actually blanked on this lake. A um, little bit wounded, really, but um, no. that's the way it Never goes. Never wounded, it's fishing. And it's just being here and being together. You had a lovely birthday. You caught yep. some lovely dinosaurs. Rexes, did indeed. And, uh, yeah, it's time to go home. But not before we say goodbye to uh, Pilar and Uzi. Pilar and Uzi. Mila loves Uzi. Oh, How's it yes. going? Who ordered this weather? <laughs> but weather, bad weather isn't always that bad, but you know when it's bad? When? When you have to pack up all your gear. Oh <laughs> yeah, gear. thanks mate. Yep, it's absolutely pissing it down and oh. it has no signs of getting any better. And, and all our kit is ready yeah, to pack. We got, but, um, we got a big fish. Yeah, yeah for me it's a big fish. It's, it's, uh, 
It is my first time I fish in the lake here. Yeah. First fish? Bang, first fish. 20.4 kilos. And it's an old friend of mine and yours as well, Peter. Yeah, yeah we yeah. caught it in 2010. I caught him. He you caught, caught him, yes, yeah. Ozzy. Yeah. But I think we wait nice. for like 20 minutes. Hopefully yeah, the then weather the rain is out stops. of order. Yeah. Like yeah, all our kits just sat in our swim, waiting to go up to the van, getting drenched. But um, Shit. Right, we're going to get the last of our kit packed up, and um, then we come back and do the photos when the rain stops. Yes. Then, yeah. Yes. Look forward to it, guys. See you soon. Yeah. Yes, we'll see, mate. Well done, buddy. Come on, what a fish. Yeah, my first one. Yeah, great start to your yeah. session, mate. Wow. And it's an old friend of mine and Pilar, oh, yeah, so yeah. Uh, yeah, it's really cool, mate. I'm really pleased for you, man. Thank Good you, thank you, thank you. Good and Best hopefully, times. you can catch a few more before you get to go home. Oh, so, uh, so. We've got uh, 24 hours left, so. Anything's yeah. possible. Yes, yeah, sure. Of Lovely, mate. Great to meet you. Yeah, and nice hope to, to meet see you again, too. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. The tight tick, nog 24 uur. De pilaar, de volgende 40 is voor jou, pik. Check this. Wow. Beautiful man. Yes, Ozzy. Yes. Come on. It's time to go now, Claire. Gonna have to uh, get our beards. Thanks, guys. You're All a right. legend. Bye -bye. We love you dearly. Nice you. Nice the legends from you. England are re removed. Removed, removed. Yeah. yeah. We give you a chance now, okay, anyway. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> but good luck for the rest of your session, man. We're Thank out of here. You. Let's go, Claire. Thank you. Ciao, ciao, ciao. Bye. This trip has been the most incredible birthday session. Enjoying some of France's finest countryside and catching some of its finest carp, and will certainly be an adventure to remember.